Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing this here, which is the Anycubic Mono X large format LCD resin printer. Let's go. Okay, so I ordered this printer from Amazon um, and it arrives in a standard cardboard box like this. Nothing fancy on the outside packaging, but to be honest, I like that because it means you're not paying for fancy, fancy stuff. It's nicely packaged inside, as you can see. Corner protectors. Really good level of packaging on this printer. Make it very hard to damage during transport, which is always good because couriers can be pretty violent. Main frame of the printer. And then in the top section of here, we've got loads of little other parts. That'll be the build vat. Power cable. Power block. Spatula, face mask and resin pourer kits. Get out. Gloves, adjustment points, USB ports, a plastic spatula, and uh, some Allen keys and a few other little bits in there. and the build plate. Okay, so that's everything unboxed now. Let's take a look at the uh, instructions here, assembly instructions. It's got Chinese on one side and English on the other. Right, so I will now dive straight into getting this printer set up. Step one on the assembly instructions is to unpack and remove all accessories, which I've now done, then plug in power and turn on the power switch. Right, now the power switch, which is here, and it wants me to rise the axis by 10 millimeters. So to do that, we go tools, Move Z, make sure it's on 10 mil, and then push up. Okay, step three is installing the build platform. You have to loosen the four screws, which you're going to need to do with an Allen key, like so. Then install and secure the building platform. My first observation here is that there's quite a lot of flex for the build platform there, which isn't a great thing, um, as it means that you've got to try and get it perfect, perfectly level every time otherwise you might lose the levelness of the bed. Uh, so not ideal with that, but uh, I'll just uh, make a conscious effort to try and get this to a point where I can consistently place it in that position. There we go. If I was going to try and improve the printer, potentially I could build some sort of adapter um, that would ensure that it fitted in a very, very fixed position every time you were to put this bed back on. Step five, place the leveling paper on the curing screen, then click home on the touch screen, wait for the z-axis to descend and then it will stop automatically. Finger press on top of the platform gently and then tighten the four screws to secure the platform. Okay, so the printer comes with a little piece of paper like this, which can be used for uh, this process here of 
aligning the bed. One thing they didn't mention is removing the uh, film that comes on the bed, which I probably should have done, as that's going to affect the level and that's not going to be on there when it's printing. So I'll pull that off, put the, pa put the leveling paper back on the screen and reattached the Dell platform. Like so. Okay. Now, I'm going to go home. Allow it to rest on the bed. It then wants you to press slightly down on the platform and tighten the four screws. So I'll just tighten them lightly at first. Do all four. And I'll come back and give them a final tighten. Okay. Now I have to click Z equals zero to confirm that that is the new bed level. It says for now the leveling process is finished. Step seven, click detection on the screen, select an image and the testing time and then click next on the screen. The curing screen should display a complete image. So let's do that. Detection, next. And then check that the screen displays a complete image, which I think it did, but I'll just do it again. It did indeed display a square. Um, which is what we're after, all good. Now we can install the resin vat. I have some friends with this machine and they say that the, uh, the vat is absolutely massive, which as you can see, it is. Um, it is pretty damn big. And apparently it needs about 500 mil just to start a print. Um, that doesn't include if you have to top up. So uh, you can certainly burn through some resin on this printer. got two securing points on either side doesn't say front or back but uh, I'm going to assume that the max line should be at the back fingers crossed anyway that said on the photo they've got this little pouring point yeah on the photo they've got that pouring point at the front so I'm going to turn it around take it back out show you the pouring point that it has there to make it easy for pouring resin back out of the uh, plate here and it also has this little max printed just here so you can see the level that resin should go up to again there's quite a lot of movement here obviously you do secure that down with these pins but I would rather it was built in so that it couldn't move before it was tightened in, of course. Right, finally, we're now on to printing 3D model. It's got a test file on here. I'm just gonna move this build platform right up out of the way. It's just gonna enable me to pour the resin in, in a minute. Once you do start handling the resin, you're gonna to want to put the gloves on. You'll get through a lot of gloves with resin printers, so uh, you might wanna buy a box if you plan to do a lot, because they give you I don't know, four or five, four or five pairs. I've got a little bottle here of Anycubic Black, so I might as well stick with the manu same manufacturer. I'll shake this up. Resin should always be shaken for about a minute, then left to stand, and then poured into the platform, ideally from a high height to allow the air bubbles to pop out. Again, should then be left, and the printer can then be started. 
printer says it comes with a test file. Uh, looks like the Anycubic lattice. Uh, so it will be interesting to see if it comes out first time. Right, while that resin's chilling there, I will just uh, add this in. This is a new feature as part of the Anycubic Mono X and potentially some of their other printers. It's an antenna which can be screwed on to the back here and that will enable remote printing either via your laptop or supposedly also your Android phone or Apple phone. Another thing this printer does have is uh, door detection to check whether the door is on and off. Apparently it's disabled by default, but I always like to have it on because it reduces the amount of smell that comes out. That's uh, here. I'll push that. The door, de door detection function is now. So yes, this printer does have door detection functionality, which will mean you can um, have it so that the printer will only be working when the cover is on, like. So if door detection function is enabled, it will only work when the cover is on like this. I like to have this on, especially for the big printers, because it means that when you take it off, the printer will pause, and especially on long prints, that's really helpful, because if it pauses, you can top up and uh, ensure that you don't run out of resin mid-print. Some people, especially those that like to do time lapses of their prints, like to have it off so that they can do a time lapse and actually see what's going on but i would advise against that one you'll get more smells in the room and it's not great stuff to breathe in especially if you're using you know the standard resin um, and two you don't know how lighting in your room is going to affect this machine and three um, obviously dust particles etc can get into the resin and affect the printing process. These are quite temperamental machines if you don't treat them with care. So yeah, don't take too many chances would be my advice. Right, that should have settled. I'll pour it in now. Watch it swallow up the whole bottle. Well, certainly could have taken a lot more than 500 mil, that's for sure. Let's put the lid on. Again, another example of wobbliness. <laughs> Things not quite fitting in as tightly and neatly as I like, but uh, there we go. It's still quite a cheap printer for the size, so you can't have everything. Plug the USB port into the side and we'll give it a go with the test model. Here it goes, first print. Fingers crossed, see how it goes. Now that that print is started, one thing I do like to do is make sure my um, air filtration system is on. If you have a lot of resin printers and you use the standard resin, then the smell can get quite bad. And obviously there's not a massive amount of information around about how good or bad this stuff is for you it's best to err on the side of caution and assume it's not great to breathe in. I probably should be wearing a mask. In the future, I'm planning to test some plant-based resin, uh, which is fairly new on the market. It's not seen wide scale adoption yet because it is generally quite a bit more expensive, but if it solves some of the problems with odor and general handling, as in you don't have to take quite so much care, then uh, I think it's gonna be a winner for me. So do uh, give this video a like and subscribe if you'd like to see that sort of thing in the future. Okay, so I've now had this printer for a day and I've done a few prints. Well, just one print actually, but I've done it a few times to try and get it to work. I was using the test print that I was included with the USB stick uh, on this printer. It's the Anycubic test lattice. Uh, the first time I printed it, it ended up like this. And uh, yeah, not quite what I wanted. Basically what happened is it got stuck to the FEP film um, and did not work. Uh, so I had a little look around and discovered that on this printer you can adjust the UV power of the screen um, and it was set to 50% out of the box. Uh, I looked at a few forums and supposedly Anycubic recommend 
using it at around 80%. So I assumed that perhaps the file was meant to actually be um, based off having the UV power at 80%. After I did that, the print came out with better success. You can see there, it almost worked, but the back corner uh, failed a little bit. So then I thought, why not try it at 100%? but ended up back to square one with uh, a print that again failed completely. Uh, so at that point I realized it probably wasn't the UV power and so switched that back to 80% um, and did some digging looking at the build plate leveling itself. Uh, one thing I do notice with this printer is it is pretty tricky to level. Um, when you do push it down and you tighten the screws, it can come up on one side or come up on the other side. Uh, so it took a bit of fiddling to get that nice and level. I was able to get it to work and the fourth one did come out fine. However, the build plate still felt like it was a little bit too far away from the FEP film. And so I re-leveled it again, then on the screen dropped it by another 0.1 mil and the final version is going on now, which hopefully will uh, come out good. Anyway, this is the first video I've done in the uh, printer unboxing scene, so hopefully you liked it, and if you do have any feedback at all, I'd be uh, happy to hear that uh, for sure. If you check back in a couple of weeks, I will have done a review video on this printer and uh, will give my final thoughts on it. One thing I would say if you are interested in this printer is I probably wouldn't recommend it to anyone who hasn't previously used uh, a resin printer because I probably would have been pulling my hair out when I was getting those failed prints if I hadn't already had some experience with resin printers. So if you are interested in getting into the resin printer game, start with something smaller. So yeah, that's it from me. See you next time.